Hey YouTube, Moose Cow here with a long overdue update to our Vici and Free France expansion. I've been meaning to post this for a few months now, but you know how it goes, one thing after another gets in the way. I'm in an apartment, I only got one table to do this all on, and in September I had to practice for the BBR Atlanta tournament, I had to work for on a, on a feature film, I had to go to the tournament, then to a wedding again in uh, LA, I had to go out, go out to LA in October, work, and of course, uh, fi finally, the Operation Valhalla game that got wrapped up not that, not that long ago. So before I dive into yet another YouTube war, I'm finally taking the time to share this expansion and do it properly. What I had posted on my channel long ago has undergone a considerable overhaul, so, uh, so if you've seen that video, consider this update heavily revised. Much like our Spain expansion, Madman and I were working on a Vici Free France expansion well before BBR4 was announced. And similar to the Spain expansion, we both found the BBR4 rules for Vichy France to be particularly underwhelming, to be honest. For instance, it doesn't make any sense to us that in BBR4, the Axis have to attack Vichy territories in order to take control of them, and somehow that doesn't void the armistice unless it's southern Vichy France. While I do uh, appreciate uh, the effort to make it simplistic, it's just unfortunately a little too simplistic, especially after having done as much research on the subject as I have. So without further ado, here's our version, the rules of which can be found in the link to our Google Drive folder, along with the rules to our other expansions down below in the uh, video description. Uh, th these, expa these expansions for Spain, the Dutch, and uh, uh, Vichy France, and Free France, we collectively like to refer to as BBR for, uh, Plus. BBR Plus, you know, for when you want uh, BBR with just a little more meat to grind. Uh, there are two philosophies we've had with our Vichy Free France expansion. One, France should not be boring to play. Seriously, I know that's, that sounds insane, right? But yeah, France should not be boring to play. <laughs> uh, two, how do we properly replicate what we see in almost every other version of Axis and Allies? That these territories, this is, this is an anniversary, Morocco, Algeria is a German territory, right? And uh, in 1942, these are, I mean, I know it's, you know, Italy and Germany combined, but it's all German territories right here, right? Every, ter every other game, it's just German, German or German and Italian, but these are German, right? Well, they're not like really German territories. Um, obviously, it just, it's, a, it's simplistic for the, the sake of a game, right? Um, but, you know, uh, uh, historically speaking, uh, it was never really, like a, never really a German-occupied territory, but, with, uh, but the UK, along, along with the other allies, did invade these territories and take control of them. And they did invade, like, here, see, like Madagascar, which is represented as a UK territory here, you know, on, on every other version of the game. So how do we represent that in a historically accurate way? So that was the other, that was the philosophy. And actually, just off the top of my head, there was a third uh, philosophy, a third thing that I wanted to add with this game that I always like to try and come up with is how do you add, how do you incorporate pieces into a game that never get any action? For example, France comes with, you know, you know when you buy 1940 Europe, France comes with submarines, transports, and mechs, but you never get to use them, right? So with uh, this expansion, I found a way to kind of incorporate those things a little bit. Um, I do have the HBG pieces, like this is an HBG uh, French transport, rather than the out-of-box pieces, which, is, which besides the infantry, besides these infantry, which I still like to use, um, all the French pieces are just blue Russian pieces, right? Um, so anyway, uh, to start off, what you'll need for our uh, Vici expansion are seven Vici infantry. These are the, I like to use these guys, because they, they don't move. That's uh, one of the things with the, with the Vici... Vici Infantry, I think this is the Foreign Legion, I think that's what they're called, but um, they're like standing guard, right? So that's kind of why I like to use them. So seven of those, you're going to need one Vici Artillery, one Vici Artillery, two Vici Destroyers, and one Vici Cruiser. And then you'll need 12 Vici Markers, including one for uh, Income Tracker. And if you want uh, free French roundels, you can get those, or you can just use the out-of-box roundels. Nothing wrong with the out of box roundels. I still like, I still like to use them, and that's what's printed on the map. So if you want these, it's totally optional. Just you know, for the sake of aesthetics, um, you don't have to use them, but you can. You know, um, it's just all, it's just all aesthetics. So whatever, whatever floats your boat. Okay. Okay. So the one thing we did incorporate over from BBR four that we did like was that uh, we incorporate over, because we like to play this with BBR three, 
and we and and you can easily use this with BBR4 instead. There's no you know no map changes or anything. So what we did incorporate is we incorporated the extra infantry in southern France, the extra infantry in Normandy, Bordeaux, and the extra infantry in French Indochina. So if you're playing with BBR3, add those guys to the setup. Okay. Uh, let's see. So in BBR4, the Axis needed to take control of all three French mainland territories in order to activate the armistice with uh, France. And then they need to back out of southern France. And to us, that's just awkward and strange on top of being historically inaccurate as the Axis didn't get to southern France. Um, in our version, creating uh, Vichy France is a two-part process, right? Like historically speaking, the, the Germans came into Par they took Paris and they took Normandy, Normandy um, but the actual Bordeaux part wasn't actually, uh, it was like given over to them as part of uh, um, the surrender terms, right? And the, the, uh, the uh, Italians, they just went a little bit into here, but the Axis never came down into southern France, right? So first, the Axis needed to take control of Normandy, Bordeaux, and Paris, right? And just so I'm, I'm going to keep reading, just so I don't uh, lose, my, lose my place. Let's see. Uh, so yeah, provided that uh, southern France is French-controlled, the Axis power that controls Paris can agree to an armistice with France on their turn. So 95% of the time, it's going to be Germany on G1. But if you have a game where Italy needs to finish off Paris, it's possible, although you'll see an Italian Vichy will be much weaker than a German one. And if Italy has to take Normandy-Bordeaux, you know, if Italy has to take one of these, it's going to slow down the process of when... Uh, 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 Vichy can be can be activated basically, because um, there will be a similar effect as that'll happen as uh, Germany will have to wait until G two to agree to the armistice, or or Italy will have to wait until their turn to agree to the armis ar armistice. Right? Um, if an armistice is decided, then the French units in southern France in C zone ninety three are immediately swapped for Vichy units. So this immediately happens. Of course, you know. Well, first off, sorry, again, getting ahead of myself. So they got to come in here. They got to kill those two units. Let's say 90%, 95% of the time that factory gets downgraded. 95% of the time it's going to be um, Germany coming in here, right, and taking these control, these two territories. Then at the end of Germany's you know, G1, Germany says, yeah, I want to agree to the armistice, right? So this immediately happens. Okay. This immediately happens. You throw a roundel down here. All right. Uh, the second part of creating Vichy France occurs at the start of France's turn. And uh, so after the armistice is agreed to, the allies, most likely UK, then get a chance to influence the remaining colonies before uh, France's turn, which is when the rest of the potential French territories can become Vichy controlled. So again, so second part, Two, it's a two-step process. The second part uh, uh, begins now at, at, the, at, the begin, at the very beginning of France's turn before the French player can do anything, right? So, um, let's see. Any, yeah, any remaining French land territory or naval unit next to a French-controlled ter uh, territory will remain free French if it is accompanied by an allied unit. So, again, this is most likely going to be G1. It's most likely going to be UK, a UK unit. Otherwise, all French territories become Vichy controlled, except French Equatorial Africa and uh, New Hebrides. I think that's how you pronounce it. That little French island right over here. So this stays free French, and this stays free French. I have these roundels. I'm going to go ahead and use them. So throw that down there, and throw that down here. If you want to, again, you don't have to. You can stick, stay with what's printed on the map, but you know, fun. Let's see. Go ahead and put that there. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. A little sneak peek at my writing right there. Okay. Uh, let's see. All right. So, uh, so basically, uh, what happens is uh, the UK has to come down on UK's turn because of the turn order. So. G1 happens, they take over this, they agree to free France. Um, UK can then, pr if they want to, I mean, they want to do their attacks, right? But at the same time, they can help also help make France a little stronger and kind of just 
change things and in kind of a you you want to like you know replicate Operation Torch and all that, right? So how do we prevent these territories from flipping Vici? They can just fly a plane down here. They can one, two, three. They can drop a guy down here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. If they wanted to, they could do this. They could do this. If they wanted to, again, it cut, maybe they don't want to because it could it could put them out of, out of a uh, position for other stuff. But this is what the potentially what they could do. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So they could do this to prevent these from flipping. Also, Italy before the flip happens, if Italy wants to, Italy can still attack. Oh, sorry. Italy can still still attack Tunisia and take control of this, and it wouldn't go Vichy because again, it doesn't happen until France's turn, right? But they could still do that if they wanted to. Right, but let's say, and then on top of that, there's this one destroyer down here. This destroyer here could go to this sea zone, and this will go Vichy, but that would prevent this destroyer from becoming Vichy as well. If, say, this destroyer or something from 81, or sorry, not 81, uh, 98, if that comes down here instead, that would prevent this from, that would influence this destroyer to not flip, although French Madagascar still would. But that's just like the basic idea, right? Okay, so, but let's say none of that happens. Let's say UK doesn't have to do that because they want to gobble up these IPCs for themselves. And uh, let's just say none of that happens. Additionally, this, the guys in UK, obviously, would stay free French. The cruiser here would stay free French if this is not attacked. However, um, it wouldn't be influenced because it's not adjacent to a French territory anymore, right? It's adjacent to a German territory. So that cruiser, if it's still alive, would never flip Vichy, okay? It's just uh, the rest of the stuff. So let's just say for posterity or, you know, just for the sake of it as an example, none of that happens. Let's say, uh, let's say UK doesn't decide to influence any, stu any of this stuff. They could, you know, they could send that mech from Egypt up to Syria to prevent the Syria guy from flipping if they wanted to. Let's say none of that happens. Uh, so if none of that happens, this guy becomes Vichy. These three guys become Vichy. And they receive roundels. Okay. This becomes Vichy. Also important, I always almost always forget about this. This little territory here, French Guiana, becomes Vichy. Okay. Syria becomes Vichy. Madagascar becomes Vichy, and even French Indochina becomes Vichy. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, let's see. Where was I? Okay. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so Vichy France is created. Now what? Oh yeah, the, let's we got the income track. The income is uh, they're at eleven or twelve actually. On the right away, they're at twelve. Vichy France is at twelve. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So they're at twelve on the on the income tracker, with free France being at one. All right. So that's how it starts off right away on France's turn. If, again, if none of those territories are influenced by the United Kingdom. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so Vichy France is created. Now what? Uh, Vichy France is a essentially a neutral pro-axis puppet state. All Vichy units cannot move. And the IPC value of uh, Vichy France is treated like a national objective uh, for the establishing axis power. So Germany or Italy gets this uh, gets this national uh, this uh, national objective card added to their um, to their national objectives you know depending on who create who establishes Vichy France where who uh, has control of Paris right um, and uh, 
uh, yeah, so the IPC value of Vichy France is treated as a national objective. Uh, beginning the following round of the armistice, so like G2, that's when they would actually receive the money for this, for if Ger Germany, you know. Um, beginning the following round of the armistice, the establishing Axis power receives half the, I the Vichy IPC value rounded down as a national objective. So if the total IPC value of Vichy territories is 7, the Axis power receives 3. At most, the total IPC value of Vichy territories would be 12, and thus the Axis power would receive 6 IPCs, but more often than not, they're going to get 5 uh, when, by, by the time they actually get to get, uh, acquire this. Um, IPCs, IPCs uh, gained from Vichy France do not contribute to the Reich point or make Chile and Argentina pro-Axis. Vichy territories do count towards the new Rome victory point. Uh, Vichy territories are considered Axis controlled, while Vichy naval units are considered Axis warships. Axis powers can move through Vichy territories freely. For example, this means that a Axis strategic bomber, let's say Italy, could theoretically land in French Guiana. They could attack something like a transport down here if they're in Gibraltar, right? Say somebody comes down here to attack Brazil, they could land. They could attack here and then land here if they want. So. Uh, the Allies got to land in here to eliminate a landing point, right? Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, the establishing Axis power can then begin to use the minor factory in southern France, and the naval factor. The naval base is uh, um, Axis friendly. If a former Vichy territory is recaptured, it doesn't become Vichy again. If an Allied power captures a Vichy territory, it becomes controlled by that power. Um, Vichy's relations with Japan in this one territory are a little different. So, let's see. And I'll touch on this in, the, in a bit. But Vichy's relations with Japan are a little different. Uh, Vichy France, sorry, Vichy French Indochina does not contribute to the South Asia or Imperial victory points. Uh, a state of war between Vichy France and Japan does not affect their relations with the other European Axis powers. Historically, Japan actually bullied their way into uh, French Indochina so that they could attack China, um, but didn't actually take control of French Indochina until late in the war. So to reflect that, Japan can enter uh, Vichy French, Vichy French uh, Indochina in non-combat. Um, let's see. Uh, does uh, Vichy France affect any national objectives? You bet. Uh, Germany's... National objective in BBR3 for Argentina and Chile becoming pro-Axis is no longer in effect. So if you agree to the armistice, if you agree to the armistice as Germany, um, or anybody does, uh, or Italy, if you agree to the armistice, this NO, out the window. No longer in effect. Um, uh, they, they, the two ter the Chile and Argentina still become pro-Axis, but uh, G Germany does not get five IPCs for them doing so. Um, uh, let's see. The, this national objective always made no sense to us. While, yes, the countries were pro-Axis, the Allies never invaded them, and they did not declare war on the Axis until late in the war due to Allied pressure. Um, even if they were pro-Axis, it doesn't make any sense how Germany would receive IPCs for them being that way, when any trade between the two would almost certainly be intercepted. Uh, oftentimes it takes two rounds for the Allies to capture both, and Germany still gets five IPCs if only Chile is pro-Axis. Uh, that, just, that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so Germany is pretty much guaranteed to get a 10 IPC boost late in the game. So if the armistice occurs, this national objective goes out the window, Germany can either get an NO boost early in the game, which makes more sense, with Vichy, or opt for the South America IPC boost later if they'd like and not agree to the armistice, but they can't get both. Okay? Um, Japan, last thing about Japan, Japan's national objective for being at peace with the Allies is null and void if they enter v French Indochina in either combat or non-combat, all right? So that's all that, that's, that's everything to do with Vichy and Japan right there. Um, Italy's national objective, let me see, Italy's national objective for access control of the, uh, three-year, Three fourths, uh, three out of four territories includes Vichy uh, control, as in BBR four. So if you're playing BBR three, just in, uh, port over this uh, slightly revised NO for BBR three. Um, and then this one's a little different. 
if access control, so sorry, so so uh, uh, Italy's national director for access control of all six North African territories is met while Vichy is in play, but only if access ground units are present in uh, Vichy controlled Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia. So if any of these territories are Vichy controlled, any of these three territories here, uh, there must be at least one Axis ground unit in each of those Vichy territories to represent influence. Similar to like um, Germany having to have a, 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 a ground unit in Egypt uh, in VBR3 or in VBR4 a ground unit in either Egypt or El, El Alamein, you know? So uh, that's, the only th that's the only thing there. So like if, they, if Italy wants, Italy's, you know, Good chance Italy's gonna get, because they don't have to knock out these boats anymore, good chance Italy's gonna get that uh, um, national objective for no allies warships in the Med, but if they want this national objective too, they gotta like port a guy over here, they gotta port a guy over here, and then Germany might have to like fly some guys down to here, right? So that is how, that's how, that's how Italy on the following turn could get that NO, right? Or or Italy or Italy could fly down here instead of instead of you know my example from earlier. But just as an idea, that is that would be how Italy could get that NO, you know, if they if they don't want to have to move these guys over or, or whatever. That would be that would be an example. Okay. All right. Now let's switch gears a little bit to free France. And, and resistance forces for the Allies power, Allied powers. How do how do those operate? Um, well, if, when the armistice happens, France immediately, Free France immediately gets one free infantry unit added in French Equatorial Africa. Okay, so this guy goes down here, and that's only if uh, the armistice is uh, occurs. Um, now I'm kind of I'm going to kind of be talking about like two things in this right now. Um, uh, free France. What, what we have with Free France is that they're a resistance force, right? And what what, what we like to incorporate is that all Allied pow nations, Allied powers that lose their capital, get a resistance force, and they get they get a resistance resistance income, uh, a lend and a lend lease. And so these two uh, card fold card files, along with this, will be in the uh, Google Drive folder. I'm gonna kind of go over these these cards, more or less what 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 they mean. Um, let's see. All so all powers that lose their capital continue to receive a halved income rounded down. So for example, if Free France has three IPCs on the income tractor, they receive one IPC. All powers that lose their capital receive a lend lease. Um, Vichy France receives that lend lease. Not Vichy France. Free France receives that lend lease here in C zone eighty three, and I got this marker here from HBG lend lease, and I have it glued together with lend lease broken, similar to what I have for the convoy markers. This is what I do for my convoy markers. So I'm just kind of throwing that there. All right, but yeah, this goes down here in C zone eighty three, and the reason it goes here when the lend lease goes, the lend lease supplies go here for in French Equatorial Africa or C zone eighty two, is because it's two spaces away, similar to the um, uh, Soviet lend lease, right? The lend lease markers here, it's two spaces away from Archangel. Same thing, same thing over there, right? Two, goes to Amur, two Z zones away. And they have to be a, a coastal territory, right? But Free France must, re, uh, must re receive it there. Let's see, do, 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 do. Okay, so yeah, uh, they all receive a lend lease. What is the lend lease? Uh, it's similar to Russia's, but a little bit different. Okay, focus, focus, focus. So, yeah, so if they roll a one, they get an artillery placed in French Equatorial Africa. Uh, if they roll a two, they get a mech or triple A. They get to, just get to decide. Uh, three, they get a tank. Four, they get a, tr a submarine or a transport placed in C-Zone 82. That's right there. Um, and then uh, two, a five, they get two IPCs for allied aid, and then six is a fighter, one time game, one time per game, or player's choice of the above, right? Um, let's see. As to why we came up with those lend lease results, we looked at Russia's existing lend lease and then looked at the lend lease value that was given to nations during the war. Ooh, focus issues. Um, according to Wikipedia, granted I know it's, it's Wikipedia, but according to Wikipedia, the millions of dollars given to Russia 
was uh, 10,982.1 million, while the lend lease given to France was 3,223.9 million. So still a sizable amount, but not nearly the same, right? So it's just kind of like a weaker comparison to the Soviet lend lease. The UK actually got even more than Russia, but for gaming balance purposes, we're simplifying it, and they'd get the same lend lease as France if uh, UK falls, right? Um, so yeah, all all powers without a capital operate like China, in that they can only buy infantry and can only place them in original controlled originally controlled territories that they control. So they could place them here. If they come into here, they could place them there. If they if this stays free France, they could place infantry here. Um, yeah, all but they are all they all powers without a capital operate like China and that they can only buy infantry, can only place them in originally controlled territories, provided they have an IPC value. So they can't place them in Casablanca, they can't place them in French Guiana if these become you know free French control, right? They can't place them there because there's not an IPC value. Same with uh, if Russia has a resistance force going on, they can't place in Nemencia, right? They can't place in these territories because there's not an IPC value, right? So, you know, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm, yeah, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, but unlike unlike uh, unlike China, uh, they can leave those territories. Oops, sorry about that. So unlike China, they can they can leave those territories, but they have to if they want to spawn their units, they have to spawn them in territories that they control, right? Um, uh, all Allied powers, not just France, receive 12 IPCs worth of units if, uh, at their capital if it's liberated. Okay, All powers without a capital receive one infantry unit at every original territory that they liberate, provided it has an IPC value. So at the beginning of Free France's turn, reason why I have this extra French guy down here, the beginning of Free France's turn, they have this guy, that's that they, that they, this new dude that they start off with here, right? So if they, they can go this way, to eventually help out Egypt, but if they go this way, bam, that's one extra guy they get because they liberated one of their own territories, right? Now they have two guys, and these two guys could try to t attack this attack this infantry, which defends it at two, and you have two ones going at them, right? So they can do that, but the important thing with that, let me throw another one of these down, is that now Free France would have an income of two IPCs, so they would receive one IPC. See? Okay. Um, yeah, but basically, backing up to the lend lease, all Allied powers receive a lend lease when their capital is taken. Uh, obviously, not uh, the U.S. That would be an instant win for the Axis. Uh, Russia's lend lease actually continues in a normal BBR game. Uh, the rule is that if Moscow falls, lend lease ceases. Um, uh, while with our version, uh, the Trans-Siberian Railway still gets knocked out of commission if the, if Moscow falls. That still happens. Um, and they can't move their factories back um, if Moscow falls. They can't do that anymore because they'll get like a halved income, right? But they can't, they can't move those back. But the lend leases, we have it so that the lend leases continue to operate because we don't understand why that would cease. Why if Moscow falls, the U.S. wouldn't be sending supplies over here? That doesn't make any sense, right? So, so that, that still continues. So uh, Russia can still put up somewhat of a fight. And on top of that, they can get more infantry units by taking those territories, by taking uh, territories with IPC values back, if they're able to, you know. Um, they might not be able to, you know, depending on how things go down. Um, UK and Commonwealth nations can receive a lend lease, two at a coastal location in a sea zone uh, of their choosing with the lend lease marker, this guy, get one of these, right? Uh, with a lend lease marker placed in two coastal sea zones away from the destination, similar to how the Soviet lend leases are arranged. Free France must, again, I'm repeating myself, but Free France must put it in this C zone. It has to go here. That's predetermined. Um, but uh, anything else can, uh, uh, can it, it, uh, UK has a, a choice. If London falls, they're probably going to want it to be Calcutta, right? But, uh, but they could theoretically put it someplace else if they wanted to, to receive uh, Allied aid. Um, so... Let's see. So example, London falls and you, the United Kingdom does choose Calcutta, right, uh, as, a, as the destination of the lend lease. Then the lend lease icon must be placed in either C zone uh, 79 or 38 because it's a coastal territory two spaces away from where it's receiving. 
Once the capital is liberated, unless it's the Soviets, Lend-Lease ceases and does not return if the capital is captured again. In the event that all original territories are captured, a resistance force retains its uns unspent IPCs, again, similar to China. Okay, last page. All right. <clears throat> now that we have un uh, uh, an understanding of how both Vichy and Free France operate, here's how Vichy France is eliminated. They're eliminated in one of three ways. If southern France is liberated, is liberated then, Fran then all France becomes united. If Paris is liberated, France also becomes united. So if they punch into here and take uh, Vichy France, then it all goes back to France. If they come in through the north and take out Paris, so if they land here, it's you know Vichy's still in, in active. But if they actually get to Paris, and this stuff is still here, then this comes back. Then this all becomes back to Free French, right? If, and then here's the uh, little more interesting one and the interesting little bit more likely way of ending. If the European Axis declare war on Vichy France. Then France becomes united, and all remaining Vichy units and territories become free French units. Oh, sorry, backing up a little bit more. If Vichy territories that do, all Vichy territories that do not contain Axis units, when one of the first two things, when when either of these are captured or liberated, um, when the, either of those two are captured, um, all uh, free French or Vichy French territories that do not contain Axis units immediately become French. But if they share spaces with Axis units, those then become Axis units, right? Those get absorbed by Axis, by the Axis. Um, if uh, so, again, now going back to uh, the third scenario, if the European Axis declare war on Vichy France, then France becomes united, and all remaining Vichy units and territories become French units. Any Vichy units in C Zone ninety three immediately become scuttled, as historically is what happened. Um, and uh, when, uh, when an Axis power declares war on Vichy France, all Axis units must be used to attack French units in shared territories and cannot be non-combat moved to adjacent territories uh, besides air units and AAA that begin in those territories. It is possible for Germany to attack French units that share a territory with Italian, uni Italian units so that the Italian units can uh, attack adjacent territories on their turn. So just an example, say, uh, say this is no, I'm just, this is an example. So say this is German controlled, right? And uh, these guys are here, right? Right, so if Germany attacks here, this is now French, right? One second. So this is now French. This, this would immediately, this would become the situation, right? These would all go off the board. It would go back to being just the normal roundels. If you had this, if you had this scenario right here, right, with, the, with, this, with this Italian here, these Germans could come in here and attack this French guy. And if they kill him, then this would become German occupied, and then this Italian would be free to do whatever. And uh, and uh, or same thing, same thing here. If uh, if if, it, if it's done in a way that makes sense, you know, so that these guys. You know, if, if Germany could come in here and take control of the territory so that these Italians could then go that way or this way or whatever, you know. So just kind of an idea right there. All right, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, so yeah, there's a number of different reasons the Axis may choose to declare war. Um, they, they could be to add the uh, Vichy IPCs to their income for the Reich point so that they could get more money in general. Uh, or to prevent the addition of more free French units if they look like they're going to, you know, take out those territories. Um, eventually, Vichy is no longer as useful towards the end of the game as it was in the war. So this is another reason that we got rid of the uh, South America NO, so that Germany can't just attack Vichy when they want to to trade one NO for another, you know. Um, so that pretty much sums up our Vichy France, ex yeah, Vichy French expansion, uh, Vichy and Free French expansions. Uh, again, the rules are, uh, the rules and files are in... Uh, the, Google, the Google Drive uh, folder that is in the uh, video description. And you'll also find these cards, card files that you can use to print. Again, just kind of hold them up for you. So you can print this card. And I like to print them out, get them kind of just uh, figure out the right size of my printer, trial and error. Um, I double side them. Um, you don't have to necessarily, but uh, then, I, uh, then I laminate them. And then here's a nice little reference card. 
These are a curt uh, courtesy of Madman. He designed these. Again, he's uh, him and me are the ones who came up with this. Came up with this expansion, more or less. Um, but, yeah, that is our Vici Free French video. Yeah. Focus, focus, okay. So, uh, again, the rules are, are in the, uh, in the, in the uh, video description. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments, or you can email me at moosecowhq at gmail.com. And uh, unlike Vi uh, the Vici French, keep rolling the dice better. <laughs>